I thank God for this month's theme, which is Rise and Shine. And it makes me think of a childhood song, Rise and Shine, give God the glory, glory, rise and shine, and give God the glory, glory, rise and shine, and give God the glory. Uh, and so it made me think of that. And I just, you know, when I was younger, I just thank God because there was a community of praise all the time. And you knew if you're part of a Christian family, a Christian community, you just knew it and, and that joy that we have. And I just pray that people start experiencing more of God's joy. People compartmentalize serving God so much these days. It's hard to feel that energy from folks that are actually praising God all the time. And I just thank God for joy this one. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And so we're going to explore this theme this month, rising and shining. God is talking about morning. God is really going to get personal in our business and what's happening in the morning time in our lives. And so and he's giving me ideas and thoughts already for this month. And I thank him for that. But just know that God wants to really come and strengthen us and the encouragement that we rise and shine and giving God the glory as we witness God's glory, but we bring God's glory when we yield ourselves to him. So I'm grateful this morning and truly, truly just pleased to be in your presence, but in God's presence as well. So let's explore the word of God today as we look at rise and shine. And um, this week, of course, what's been on my mind a lot, uh, those that you know, my father passed away about five years ago now, exactly five years ago. Uh, and so my thoughts this week have really been in, in prayer and I've been uh, coming out of a consecration, but just staying focused on prayer in particular, because there's been so much to happen since my father has passed away. And you just don't know what happens when death comes into a family, the death of a father. And so I've had my personal journey. It's really been personal, private with the Lord. And it's been wonderful because I've learned a lot, but I've been thinking a lot about my dad, uh, what, he is, what he did in his life which is incredible, the things that he exposed us to as a family, and just very grateful that although my father had his challenges in his uh, 20s, 30s, running from God, he, he made sure that we knew God, and that's the best gift, and you all have heard me say that as a parent, is to give your children Jesus. If you give them nothing else, you better give them Jesus. People focus on giving them clothes, giving them uh, schooling, giving them this, giving them that, but giving your children Jesus is the best thing, and I'm so grateful that my father was a strong man in that regard where our household um, served God continually. There was no break in that, even when he struggled himself uh, with his faith. And so I thank God for my dad. Uh, and I was thinking about my siblings because everyone's going through their struggle, but it's just important to think about each other because I have my own journey and I sh I'm sure that they did. So I was thinking and praying about them a lot this week and, and want you all to continue to pray for my family. But I thank God for the scripture that God gave me last week as well, which is the same. And God keeping my mind in perfect peace in that Isaiah 26 and three. And I just encourage you all that challenged by different things, just to pray for God to keep you in peace as you're even going through realities of life. And again, I'm human like everyone else and, and I go through. And so I thank God that he's been there continuously asking me, are you okay? Checking in, what's going on? Uh, he's been so consistent. And I thank God for the morning scripture from co-pastor today, because again, God has been there and he's a God of his promises and he is not uh, fell short of those promises. So I just thank God this week and ask you to continue to pray for me, pray for my family, pray for my mother. Again, uh, everyone is still on this journey of the absence of my father. And so I thank God uh, for you all. And I thank God for for prayer. So continue to pray for us in that regard. And so as we get into today, today's message, I just want to offer prayer for us today. Uh, and again, I pray that this message really just goes in and really be that foundation that we need for this month. Uh, and Father, we just thank you again for the opportunity we have to come to you, to be in fellowship with one another and fellowship with you. And we just pray, oh God, that you would allow this word to really settle in our spirit today and really set us up for this month, we do have a great expectation that you will do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And God, we pray that we walk in humility, that we recognize, Lord, I need you. Lord, I need a word from you. I'm not doing so okay that I don't need to hear from you all the time. And so I pray, God, that our spirit stays tender to you uh, throughout today, but throughout this month, as you, again, lay a good foundation for us um, for this month as we really explore rising and shining as a theme for the month. So we thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So again, they're still building on wellness and just wellness on every level. And if you didn't get a chance to come out to those services, um, I just, I don't know if they're going to be available or whatever, but we need to make the teaching available because it's important that we understand this wellness on every level, our body, our soul, and our spirit, what God wants and our complete uh, well-being and wellness in our soul. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about morning kills. Uh, and so morning kills, and, and when you're hunting, uh, early, early in the morning, if you just study hunting, uh, and even in the animal kingdom, just hunting in the, in the darkness in the early wee hours of the morning, and really uh, the animals like make those morning kills. Like in the morning, you see that things were killed uh, throughout the night. So I'm talking that sense of morning kills. And sometimes, you know, when we don't start our day right, you know, we start off and, and wrong. So morning kills is that idea. And I'm going to really encourage us to start the morning with victorious mindsets, because because when we don't start out right, the kill happens right there, right? If you get up and you're so consumed with all that you have to do, you don't think about you know God and I'm and it's more than just thinking about God right it's thinking about God but then praying and and having time with God meditating on God it's really starting your morning well and leaving don't leaving the not leaving the house without praying without seeking God in in a, in a intimate way not a quick on the fly but really having this relationship with God. And that's what it's about too. If you, it depends on what kind of relationship you have with God. I don't have a, like a fly by night relationship. And so I have to pause and think about God. And cause if not, your morning can start, you leave that house and it, it, death has already happened. You're, you're killed for the day. So I want to talk about these morning kills that happen when we don't take time to pray, take time to prepare ourselves for this day. So really starting our day with a victorious mindset. And that's when we talk about rising and shine. That's really letting God's glory come to us immediately and stepping into that immediately. Because uh, if not, the kill happens right in the morning. And some people by the end of the day, they're like, man, this has been a bad day. But how did it start? Did the death happen at the beginning of the day? So that's the thought that I want to give you. Uh, and just how do you start your morning with the victorious mindset? And I want to jump right into um, the Bible but go into Judges uh, 16, and I'm going to jump um, to verse 1 and 2. And again, I'm not trying to give you a, a historical lesson here, and we'll, perhaps we'll get to that with Minister Adi Kola if we get to the book of Judges, which would be exciting to have him walk us through that. But you all know the story of Samson, known for his great strength, doing, doing great exploits for God. But I want to go back to that story in the life of Samson, just to draw some things out as we consider this topic today. But this, the Bible starts here in Judges 16 that Samson went to Gaza and he saw a prostitute. By this time, Samson had been married before. He married the wrong woman, a woman outside of his uh, nation, outside of his belief, if you will. He's always been attracted to strange women. But here this day, he's going down to Gaza, the city of Gaza, and he saw a prostitute and he went to her. And the news got around, Samson's here. And many gathered around, hiding, waiting all night for him at the city gate quiet as mice, thinking at sunrise will kill him. And there are many of us that are, are, are saved, that, that have callings on our lives, there's specific things God wants you to do. But you need to know the enemy is around us because the enemy does not want us to execute on the things of God. And so there are many times the enemy could be gathering around us and he could be in hiding. And for me, knowing that my calling on my life, I expect that the enemy is waiting. I expect that he is. And the Bible lets us know he's always lurking about. You know, when God talked to Cain, he's right there crouching all the time, just hiding. And the enemy will somehow will wait for you all night. And that's the thing. Many of us are walking around, not in obedience to God, but you're kind of slipping and going away. But the enemy is just watching us, watching our patterns. And he will wait. Talk about patience. You pray to God for patience, but the enemy is going to be patient. But again, as Samson was there, they heard that he was there, this, this strong man of Israel that kept defeating them. And so they didn't like him at all, right? And he was, you know, right, he was born and raised to be a deliverer of the children of Israel. So they, they when he came, they gathered around, they waited all night for him, quiet 
it because they wanted to at sunrise to kill him. So I'm going back to this idea of being killed off in the morning. The enemy wants to get us in the morning. And this is the case here with, with Samson. They wanted to kill him in the morning. And that's that morning kill. So the enemy will just let you do what you want to do, but he hopes to defeat us in the morning. Want, so this idea, what happens before the morning, how we prepare, how we live, how you even go to sleep, all of that is part of what goes into how you wake up in the morning where's your mind in the morning and the enemy is looking to kill you and that's what morning kills and many focus on the nighttime attacks but you really think about the enemy attacking in the morning so people like to preach and talk about being in the clubs and being out at night in the darkness all of that is true but it's important also to understand the enemy also can attack you in the morning time the enemy doesn't want your day to be good he doesn't it's not he's not trying to wait till saturday night for you to go to the club he wants to stop stop you right on monday morning so don't focus your on nighttime attacks, but think about morning attacks. How does the enemy get me in the morning time? Your attitude, you, your attitude can show up right in the morning and we should just pause and get your attitude in check because you woke up and you have a bad attitude. You're, you're angry, you have anxiety, you're rushing. And, and we our behavior kind of shows itself early in the morning and we should be checking ourselves in the morning. And so that's why praying and having time with God as a discipline is important because if you start with God, you're gonna start out okay. The truth is many times we just don't do that, right? The attacks can come in the morning time. And so during that time, um, he's with that prostitute. He also went and he found Delilah at some point. You all know the story. And Delilah's like, what's your secret? And, and these men of the city, because they were waiting, they wanted to, to kill him. They wanted to destroy him. They're trying to find, hey, what is going on? Ask him. They paid her. Ask him. Find out what his strength is and where, where it lies. And he told Delilah, three different things and it just wasn't true as she tried to find out his strength. And so she was frustrated at this point. We'll get to verse 16. It says, and so she pressured him day after day with her words and pleaded with him. He was annoyed, so annoyed. Then finally he told her everything that was in his heart. Listen, men, everything that was in his heart. And he said to her, a razor has never been used on my head, for I've been a Nazarite to God from my mother's womb. If I am shaved, then my strength will leave me and I will become weak and be like any other man. Pay attention to this verse. So the enemy will lurk around you. He'll try to get us in the morning. And the goal, he wants to take away your strength. And many of us are walking around now, but are you really strong in the Lord? Or have you become weakened because you've been neglectful? Here we are in August. Have we been obedient to God? Are we doing, are we growing towards God? Are we growing with God? You know, because sometimes you can't tell. I'm okay. I'm going to church. Yeah, I'm doing all the right things. I'm checking in the midweek service and this and that. But am I really secured and growing in God? Or have I been weakened? Has the enemy been lurking around me? And is he drawing from me? Is your strength being drawn from us because of things that we may have become engaged in? right? But he finally told her what was going on. And so this nagging, I want you to think of nagging. And I, I don't want to have a picture of a woman, a, a wife nagging a husband, because we have an issue with that. She's a nag, she's a nag. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a diff nagging as a definition is harassing someone to do something persistently, painful, worrying, like pestering someone, like a child could keep, mama, 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 can I, can I? And it just kind of gets, and people say it gets on your nerves at a as a term, but it wears on us mentally. It's stresses us. And so when people are just constantly coming at us, like, do this, do this. And so that's what Delilah was doing. Tell me what it is. Tell me what you say. You you really love me and, and you don't. And the enemy uses that line. When people are in the, in the wrong relationship, that term, if you really love me, you'll do this. If you really love me, you'll do that. And they do things, remind folks, yeah, I love you, but I love God more. Don't put, put the love of others higher than God's love because people have you doing all kinds of crazy things. And so that's what she was doing, pressuring him. And what it turns out, and we're familiar, it's a tormenting spirit. She tormented him like all the time, like, tell me. And that's what becomes physical. It's like mental suffering. And it's like, that's like, he finally broke and said, this, well, this is it. I, I'm a Nazarite, okay? I'm a Nazarite. And no razor has ever touched my head. And again, if I am shaved, then I I will become weak like other men. So understand this, this tormenting spirit. And the enemy will torment us. And sometimes we, like Samson, will give in. And in verse 20, and then she, she got the secret and she told the men that came to get him. She said, Samson, they're here. And he woke out of his sleep and told himself, 
get this. He says, I'll go out like I did at other times like this and shake myself free. I want you to understand that Samson was hanging out often in the place he should not have been. Samson was hanging out in the Bible and you read it, you're gonna find he was laying in her lap and being lulled to sleep. He was in places where the enemy was. He was in the enemy's territory and God had given him grace on several times before. And God does that. You may be in places of doing things you're not supposed to do. And you know it's wrong and God will give you his grace. He'll have mercy upon us and we escape. But he kept going back and he kept you know, getting deeper and deeper into the point where he told his secret to her. And all of a sudden he says, hey, I'll just do what I did before. And many times we think that we can just jump up and do what we always do. But as he found out in this last part of this verse, it says, but he didn't know that the Lord had abandoned or departed from him. And that many of us have been walking in disobedience for so long, you don't realize that you don't have the power of God. You may think you do, but the reality is we are not powerful in the Lord because God's spirit has left us. And that's what happened with Samson. He was just enjoying his life, you all. And many Christians, believers, and, and you may be out there, you do, yeah, I'm saved, but you're doing your own thing. And be careful with that because you might find yourself without power and getting up in the morning and you have no strength. And he thought, I'm okay. And many times you might think you're okay, but you might not be if you have not been in the places of God. He didn't know that the Lord had departed from him. And some of us are like that. You don't realize you don't have any more power because you have lost your anointing. And so you're getting up with nothing. People are getting up in the morning with nothing because you, something has happened. I want you to understand that what happened here with Samson that caused him to get up with nothing. You don't want to find yourself getting up with nothing. And he got up with nothing. Charles Spurgeon says this, he says, now there are a thousand razors with which the devil can shave off the locks of a consecrated man. That's what I want you to hang on to. God, we are to be holy unto God, consecrated for his use. Samson was consecrated. This is it, consecrated, separated unto God for God's use, right? And it says, Samson is sound asleep, so clever is the barber that even lulls him to sleep and his fingers move across his pat, uh, pate and the fool's pate, which is in making bear. The devil is cleverer far than even the skillful barber. People think you're smart, but the devil is skillful. The barber says he is, he is smart. He's intelligent. We're not ignorant of his intelligence, but he is intelligent. He can shave the believer's locks while he scarcely knows it. Samson didn't even realize what was happening. And I want you to have this relationship that he was having with this woman, this relationship that he was having, ungodly relationship was leading him away from what? His relationship with God. God. And be careful of your relationships. Is it leading you away from God? Because that's what was happening. As a consecrated man unto God, he had this routine and, and relationship with God that he should have been attending to, but something else had gotten his attention. And we know that he has this desire and he's spending more time. He's allowing himself to be lulled and seduced and had building a relationship on the other end. So this consecrated life that we're supposed to have, if you don't honor that, then we will become weakened just like Sam's and you won't even see it happening because it's so subtle. It's like stealing sand from the beach, but eventually the beach ends up bare and that's what happened. You'll get up with nothing. And so Psalm 63 said this, oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. The importance of seeking God all the time, but as a, a routine, this psalmist, in the morning time, I'm going to seek God. My soul, my mind, my will, and my emotions is thirsting for God. We see Samson was thirsting for other things. And if you're thirsting for other things, be careful. Like that's a warning sign. If our flesh is longing for other things, we have to long for God. And when you're consecrated to God, dedicated to God, then seeking him is something we do. This is how we avoid waking up empty. You have to seek God. And that, so when you wake up in the morning, Lord, fill me up, right? Early am I going to seek you. I want my soul to be just, just saturated with thee. I want my flesh, hallelujah, to obey you and to walk in obedience. And therefore, I want you. And so this idea of a disciplined life of early seeking God, which is one way to avoid not waking up empty. 
And when this happens, I this desire, I want to see God's power and glory. And that's what we want to witness God's glory. You want to see God's power and glory in your life for real, as they say, for real though, then you need to seek God. There's no way you're going to see this dramatic power and glory of God without desiring it or seeking it. But this is why I seek God early. This is why I'm consistent. This is why I want to be strengthened in my pursuit of God, because I want to see his power. I want to see his glory. I want to see him in the worship. I want the power of God to be very evident in my life. I do not want to wake up enemy, empty. And so we have to wake up. And some of us need to wake up. And Isaiah 52, awake, awake, put on strength. And we're not putting on strength. Part of our strength, prayer is a strength, a protective factor. God's word, learning it, reading it, memorizing it, it's a protective factor. It is putting his word inside to stand against things that may try to come inside my mind. It's filling my mind with the things of God, consecrating on God, thinking on his word, meditating on it day and night. So we have to wake. And some of us need to wake up and put on your strength. And some of you, us know that we're not walking in strength. You can be stronger in the Lord by doing more in the things of God to make you strong. Put on your praise, put on the worship. We have to really signify that I'm consecrated to God. Y'all, much as you desire to be like everyone else, you're not like everyone else. You are holy, you're peculiar. I'm sorry, Samson, you have those locks on your head, but it's not just about those locks, sir. It's about the way you should be living, Samson. And when the enemy sees that you're living a Away from God, that you're falling away from God, he's going to see where the weakness really is. And the weakness is in this life that's not consecrated to God because our protection comes, the covenant comes because of the consecrated relationship. And if we give that up, then we're giving up the protection of God and we wake up empty. So awake, hear me today. Awake out of your sleep. Wake up. Ephesians 6 says, put, be strong in the Lord. So putting on your strength, right? Be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. We know about this armor. Put on the whole armor of God, right? Not just pieces of it. Put it all on completeness. And only that's the only way we stand against the devil. You can't leave any opening for him because if you do, he's going to come in and he's going to take us out. So put on the whole armor of God. And then verse 18, this is a piece that I love. People like talking about the armor, they describe it. But verse 18 is important. Praying always, with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, not just offering up, hey, God, just cover me for today. Hey, God, have your way. No, be really spiritual and, and have your prayers influenced by God's spirit. Spending time, you can't just say what you want to say, but do you listen to God in prayer? So praying always with, with supplication. And it says watching. We have to spend more time watching. Samson wasn't watching his life. He wasn't guarding his life well. Guard it with perseverance. You have to persevere in this. You have to be committed to watching your life to ensure that you are growing towards God and not growing away from God. Watching is something we don't do, but you watch and so that you don't wake up empty. When we do this, this is how you're preparing for your day. When you're praying in the morning, when you're putting on the armor of God, when you're praying with prayer and supplication, when you're watching and persevering, this is what you do to prepare for your day. Every day, not just when we're in trouble, but every day we need to do this because sin is there. Samson was enjoying sin. And that is the many, our flesh desires sin, right? And so many are living in a paradox. You're living in this contradiction. Yes, I'm saved, but I'm doing all these other things. Look, are you saved or not? Do you want God or not? That's that contradictory life. You can't have that. You're living in a paradox. Samson's living in a paradox. Here you are as a Nazarite, but yet you're coming, you're getting hooked up with strange women. You're, you're spending time in places where God is not. That's a paradox, sir. You're supposed to be saved. Don't be, have you have anybody ever said, I thought you were in the church. They see you doing something. They say, oh, I thought you was part of the church. You know, living in contradiction. On one hand, you want to do great things for God. And on the other hand, people are yielding to sin and, and walking and deceitfulness, right? And so people see one thing on the outside, oh my God, yeah, that man, he's really saved. He goes to church, he's very holy. But on the inside, something is happening inside of your heart. Something was going on in Samson's heart. Make sure there's nothing going on inside of you. Man looks on the outside but God looks on the inside. God knows what's there. That's why it's important for us to come before the Lord, to say, search my heart. You find things that are even hidden from us. The Bible, scripture lets you know, that thing, our heart is so deceitful. It, it keeps things from us. 
but God knows. And so inviting him in, search my heart, search the depths of my desires and being honest and open with God because people are living one thing, but on the inside, there's something else going on. And if you're out there today, I'm saying be careful of a morning kill in your life. Don't be enjoying the pleasures of sin because the enemy will lead you to death, a morning kill. And you think you're okay, but you're not. So this is a morning we said, Lord, I don't want to experience a morning kill. And so that's Romans 12, 1 and, 1, uh, 12, 1 and 2. Fully submitted and committed to God. I was in prayer this week with the, the faith community when we were talking about, you have to be 100% committed to God. God doesn't need your fleshly sacrifice. There's no other sacrifice that can be made. What we give is ourselves as a living sacrifice and through worship. That's what God wants it all, not just pieces of us, but God wants it all. And this idea, Samson, what was going on? Why are you loving like ungodly women, women that are not that following God? What, where does this love comes from? And how did this happen? And how can it happen for you and me when our hearts become divided? If something was in his heart. Proverbs 4 and 23 says, be careful for how we think above all that we guard and protect your heart. And he wasn't protecting his heart. You and I have to be careful. Protect and guard your heart. Be careful what you connect with. Be careful who you connect with. Be careful what kind of the things you think on and meditate on. Because those are the things that will run our lives. Our life flows from the things that are in our heart. And there are things that are in Samson's heart. He was a Nazarite, you all, committed and consecrated to God, committed to a relationship with God, but he was leaving that because something was had gotten in his heart. And that's why I'd be careful. Lord, keep, keep my heart clean. I don't want anything to get in because the enemy does this subtle takeover. And you think you're doing okay, I'm a Christian, but something's in your heart causing you to do other things. And those morning kills just keep happening over and over. And so his hair was a symbol of consecration. Understand that it, it wasn't his hair that was his strength, but his hair was a symbol of this consecrated life. And it goes back to his mother in, in the 13th chapter of Judges, right? When God said, he shall be a Nazarite, no razor touching his head, except, but it was a whole consecrated life that he was committed to. And he was committed to that because he was living that because his hair was a reflection of this consecrated life of this Nazarite life. But he broke his consecration with God. And that's what we do. We break our consecration with God because we try to mix it in with other things. And Samson thought that he can do that, but we see clearly he broke his consecration with God. His hair was a pledge of God's favor, God's grace in his life, but he broke his consecration. So these prolonged extended relationships with Delilah, with sin, caused him to break his consecration with God and caused him to live in compromise. And when you live in compromise for prolonged periods of time, it has consequences. So eventually Eventually, it broke this consecration because he shared with her everything, the depths of his heart. I'm a Nazarite and I live before God. This is what I do before God. But he wasn't doing that. He was in her lap and he just shared everything. And, and she knew. And because he told her everything that I cut off these locks, he became weakened because his consecration was finally severed after he gave his total heart to this woman who was never in love with him. She was being paid from the beginning. And that's what the enemy will deceive us. And you'll think that you're doing good stuff. You think that people love you, but they will leave you hanging like Delilah did here. So the consecrated life is the strength. Our strength, you all, is in our relationship with God. And you have to build your relationship with God, build your life with God more than anything. Build it with through prayer, through God's uh, word, through worship. This, your strength is in your relationship with God. Get ready to get up. That's what, as we move into the remainder of this year, God says, we need to wait. Get ready. It's time to get up. It's time for you to move further into the things of God and start doing more for God that his glory can be revealed. So an encouragement for this our community is to get ready to get up. So when we awake, 
You want to get up with strength. You don't want to experience a morning kill. You want to get up with something. Don't, when it's time to go forth, don't get up with nothing. So get ready to get up is what God is saying. Rise and shine. Like they're doing the army, rise and shine. Like the children's song, rise and shine. It's time to give God the glory, you all. Awake out of your sleep. If you've been hanging out in the wrong places, stop that. Awake, be strengthened at this time and you know what to do. Don't risk getting up with nothing. Don't risk it. Don't think you're okay. Don't risk getting up with nothing. Don't be one of the enemy's morning kills. I don't want to be a morning kill. My strength is in my relationship with God. Fight for that relationship. Fight for that strength. Father, we thank you today. We are aware of the enemy and we realize that we make choices. We understand sin, sin, and when it's conceived, when it's in it, it brings forth death. And we see this even in the relationship with Samson as he prolonged and extended his time in the pleasures of sin. He lost his connection, his relationship with you. The consecration was broken, which weakened him. And so God, we pray for our relationship today. We pray that you would strengthen us as we desire more of you we want to pursue you in our prayers, pursue you in your word, pursue you in our disciplines, that we would have a strong relationship with you, that we live this holy life that you expect of us, this consecrated life that causes us to live differently. Our life is not our own, but it belongs to you. And we want to walk in worship, walk in spirit of worship, walk in obedience to you. We pray that you strengthen us and strengthen our relationship with you. We thank you for your word today. We don't want to have a morning kill. We want to get up with strength. We want to put on strength every day and strengthen our relationship with you. So we thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.